We didn't expect the updated SpaceX Starship's interior to simultaneously be so mysterious and elegant. It's another way that design changed the way spacecraft interiors were made. Elon Musk has surprised us with his engineering, but the designers of the inside of his Starship gave it an exotic and irresistible look that made it overwhelming. The inside of the spaceship has been updated and set up for levels 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Each of these levels has an important job that the crew will use in the air. All these levels are built in the first stage of the Starship, which is the ship itself, on top of the Super Heavy Booster. Note that the Super Heavy Booster is the Starship liquid oxygen methane, which fires up the 33 Raptors engine to fight and beat the Earth's gravitational force. Let's keep going and discuss how each level of a Starship, from level 1 to level 6, can be used. However, before we begin our video, we would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe to our YouTube channel and also press the bell icon. Let's get started. Level 1 is called the EVA section which stands for Extravehicular Activity. It has two main parts, a storage bay and an airlock that leads to the surface via an extended lift system. Next to the vertical entrance from level 2 is a rack for communication systems with a touchscreen monitor and a station for emergencies and medical care. The rest of the perimeter is used to store large and medium-sized cargo. Since the airlock doors are all the same size, it is possible to move large amounts of equipment to and from the surface. This is done with a lift system that goes past the spacecraft and comes down to the Earth. The airlock could also be opened and lifted to make room for a six-crew rover. Level 2. Science and storage are done with the International Standard Payload Rack, or ISPR, system on Level 2. The interior perimeter has eight ISPRs, nine multi-use fixed storage racks, and 7 to 12 individual storage units that roll on a track to give access to the units behind them. Some fixed units could have a medical bay with a treatment bed and life support equipment stored vertically in one or two units and dragged down as needed. Foldable walls would divide the space during treatment. Level 3. This is where the wet area of the ship is, with the toilets, sinks, and the system for storing and recycling water. On average, crew members work out for two hours daily to avoid bone and muscle loss from being in zero-G for long periods. Six zero-G fitness machines that can be used differently are set up near the windows. Each workout station can be put flat on the floor, which frees up space that can be used for something else. The center core is the same as level four, so a second shelter could hold 30 crew members in case of an emergency. The outside walls of the core could be used for vertical hydroponics to add a soft, natural touch to the area while also giving people food and improving the air. In an emergency, the concave deck gates can be closed thanks to the vertical access ladder lift system parts that can be pulled back between floors. Level 4. This level is for personal crew pods where people can sleep, have their own space, work, and fly. There are 20 pods on two levels, each with shutters for privacy and noise reduction. This version of the design can fit 30 crew members. At least one third of the space is set aside for hot racking when the crew switches pods between shifts. Each pod entrance has a monitoring slash display interface for assigning rotations and a communication system. To fit as many pods as possible, the interior space had to be efficient, comfortable, and valuable for more than one thing. A seated and lying orientation was needed to give 20 crew members a place to take off, land, rest, and comfortably work alone. Because of where the heat shield is on the Starship, the pods on the windward side have display screens that look like windows and show distant views or give each person their senses. There are now enough rooms in the center core for 15 crew members. It is meant to be a place to stay for a short time, during a solar radiation event. The core bulkhead storage offers more space for mission supplies, emergency supplies, and backup life support equipment. Level 5. On Level 5, we prepare and eat food, store food, hang out with other people, and have crew briefings. It's made with two hatches, so sections within a level can be split up if needed. The hatches also give the crew a clear line of sight, making the space even more prominent. 
The ship's storage and functional equipment are set up on the windward side to make the most of the space and allow zero-g circulation. Food supplies for the short term are kept in storage containers. These containers are restocked from long-term storage on levels 1 and 2. Later, the food is cooked at one of the four prep stations where several crew members can cook simultaneously. Like the flight deck, the viewing window has a shield against solar radiation or space debris and a two-slit screen that comes together when the shields are shut. This feature lets you watch movies or play games with a group on a bigger screen. Level 6 the deck has 10 crew seats and 5 display control panels. Taking the current design of the Crew Dragon capsule and making it bigger gives it a wide viewing window and a shield to protect against solar radiation or space debris. The crew can move between floors by going through the center core. If the header tank was moved or didn't need to be there, the core could be made bigger, letting it have a second nose docking like the current Dragon capsule. When sending people to Mars, you have to consider how to keep them alive. For human missions to Mars, 100 metric tons of equipment will be needed for things like air, water, food, and getting rid of waste. If this number were converted back to the mass needed in low Earth orbit, it would go up by at least a factor of 7, depending on how the mission was designed. When people finally move to Mars, the second wave of missions may include two starships with crews and other unmanned and cargo starships. Eventually, the locks and methane tanks could be used to build pressurized homes on the surface of Mars. The first basic starship should be able to hold between 10 and 20 people and 100 metric tons or more of cargo. On these missions, cargo will include extra tools that people will need to stay healthy and get work done while traveling to the surface of Mars. Most likely, people will spend their first few years on Mars on Starship until they can move into their homes. So, the radiation risk must be considered and, if necessary, reduced. Equipment must be made for this first infrastructure to help the people on the surface. In reality, SpaceX already has some experience with life support systems because their new Crew Dragon capsule is meant to take astronauts to the ISS. The life support system is pretty simple compared to what it takes to keep people alive for weeks or months in deep space. It's also essential to think about how to keep people safe in an emergency. Other problems need to be solved. First of all, experts are still determining if humans can live and thrive in the low-gravity environment of Mars. Our bones and muscles are used to the gravity on Earth, but because the gravity on Mars is so much less than on Earth, our tissues may break down more quickly. Scientists are still trying to figure out if exercise would be enough or what other tools would be needed to eliminate all the radiation. Also, think about the simple comfort of people. During the launch, design choices like the lighting and angle of the chairs could affect how people feel and act. Especially in a place with no gravity, it would take longer to hurt people's mental health. The most important thing to worry about is how they act. Because people are so far away from Earth and don't have a direct link to it, it could be hard to know how quickly they can adapt to another planet. Donovan, who runs the Translational Research Institute for Space Health at NASA, says that these problems are only the tip of the iceberg. Starting a colony on the moon will take a lot of work. Sending people to Mars permanently will require scientists to learn more about how to keep life going. After Starship is done being built, SpaceX may try to fix these problems, but this will delay when people can fly to the moon or on Starship. Only a few mass margins can exist. Musk said that the ultimate goal of making rockets that can be used more than once is to solve the rapid reusability problem. In the same way that Musk is focused on SpaceX, it is very hard. For a rocket to be reusable, it needs to be able to slow down from about 3,000 miles per hour to a safe landing speed and land right on target. And that's it for today. We hope you found our video interesting. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and share it with others. Also, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of our new uploads. In the end, thanks for watching and see you next time.